dipping back into the mailbag to find out how close the Celtics really are to a championship and what the hell does a buyout actually mean anyway? It's right now on the Locked On Celtics podcast. So high right now. Anything's possible. Oh my mama. Oh my mama. Anything's possible. Rainy J's back with the vengeance. Back. All the real Celtics fans in attendance. Ooh. This is the truth like 34. Yeah. This is like walking in the garden when you hear the roars. The crowd goes crazy. Most in-depth coverage on the daily. Mainly podcast royalty. The content kings. When you talking about the franchise with 17 rings. Focus like Danny at the deadline. Global with it. Got a local feel like the red line. The blue line. The green line. Play it in between time. I'm going to throw my C's jersey on in the meantime. And press play. When the F's done, I can't wait until the next day. Trying to stay in tune with the C's. That's the best way. Melly. Hey there, welcome back to the Lockdown Celtics podcast. Thank you for making the show part of your daily routine. I'm here for you Monday through Friday, whether you're listening to the show on a podcast through your headphones, watching it on TV, streaming it, the YouTube show through your, your computer onto the TV, or just listening in the background at work. I'm not going to tell your boss, listen to it, listen to multiple shows. I'll keep it our secret. I'm John Corrales. Thank you for including me. I cover the Boston Celtics for Boston Sports Journal. And I've written a book called Boston Celtics All-Time All-Stars, which I hope you pick up. If you want a personalized copy, it's at johncorrales.com. So I put out the call for mailbag questions. I, I do a mailbag basically during the offseason every Friday. And since I announced the new system, which is going to johncorrales.com slash mailbag, this way, if you're not on social media, if you're not on Twitter, where I usually ask for questions, uh, you have an equal opportunity. If you're listening to the show, you want to ask a question, it's very simple. Go to johncorrales.com slash mailbag and submit your question. I will answer it here on the podcast. And I had so many people ask questions that if I did this, if I did them all on Friday, the show would be two hours long. So I'm splitting it up. So today, Tuesday, you're getting a Tuesday mailbag as well for some leftover questions. Don't want to let them linger too long because I want people to get their answers. Today's show is brought to you by Rock Auto. It's an amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Visit rockauto.com and tell them Locked On sent you. Let's just dive into these mailbag questions. Get them out of the way here. Let's get you the answers that you're looking for, starting with Braden, who says, with Kemba now gone and the only proven shot makers on a team being Jason, Jalen, and Dennis Schroeder, do you think Tatum takes a big stat leap, or does he have a real chance? And does he have a real chance at an MVP level season, in your opinion? Well, let, let's look into what's what's an MVP. What's an MVP level season? Generally, you got to average close to thirty points. So Tatum has has been close. He's certainly had a number of big selection, a big scoring uh, numbers last season, especially at the end of last season. So. You have a little bit of a narrative as well. There's a narrative that builds up to an MVP. Uh, Usually the team has either maybe some lower expectations and one player in particular very obviously brings them up to a higher level. That's what you could look at with uh, Nikola Jokic and the Denver Nuggets. Sometimes it's just this player is dominant and it's LeBron, it's Kevin Durant, it's those level guys that, that have those MVP seasons and hey, you know, very, very likely that those one of those guys is going to have another MVP season at some point here. But Tatum has the ability to score a lot of points, right? Flashy, big numbers. He has the ability to do it if he can increase his efficiency a little bit more and cut out some of the mid-range stuff and really attack. If he can get to the rim, get to the free throw line, if he's drawing fouls, those type of plays get noticed because when you're going to the rim and they foul you to stop you, then the narrative starts to kick in again. The only way to stop Jason Tatum is to foul him. That brings you to another level. So can Tatum have an MVP level season? It's it's going to be tough. I don't think I put him in the in the top five going into the season, but he certainly has a chance. He certainly has a chance. From the end of last season where he – was dropping 50 plus points per game in, in some of these, in some of these nights, you take that and you have people kind of with those expectations. If the Celtics suddenly are a third seed and playing well, 
you can sit there and say, hey, look, Ime Udoka, you know, maybe Marcus Smart defense, Jason Tatum offense, right? Jason Tatum's offense is going to be one of those big reasons why the, the Celtics would be at that level. So, yeah, that would put him in the conversation. Can he have – can he win the MVP? I don't know. That That's going to be a tough one. He's going to have to have, like, 30-plus points per game. And on top of it, like, if he can get to – five or six assists per game, you know, and, and be an efficient scorer, rebound, kind of average like 38 and six, then you, then those those could be MVP numbers. If he can get, if he can average double digits in one of these other categories, can he get up to 10 rebounds a game? Can he, can he put you at 30 points, 10 rebounds and six assists, seven assists a game? Now that is an MVP season. That's an MVP level season. The Celtics are going to need him to do a lot. And so that that is not out of the question. Uh, I, I don't know if he's going to have all of that come together, but he could. He very he very well could. If I were to tell you that Jason Tatum is going to have that kind of season, I don't think people would go like, oh, you're crazy. Because because he, he is capable of that. So he, yeah, I think he can take a big leap statistically. And, and there are things that I've talked about before, tightening up the handle a little bit so you can get to the rim a lot easier, cutting out the mid-range, like I said, defending a little bit more, getting back into those, uh, what you did two seasons ago, getting into the, the passing lanes and tipping it out and finishing dunks in transition. That, that will go a long way to the MVP too. If Tatum can get back to the tip a ball out, get the steal, finish a dunk in transition – once or twice a game again, or feels like once or twice a game, then for sure he can get into into that level. Delon asks, I'm seeing a lot of trade talks of Damian Lillard coming to Boston. Do you think it's still a possibility? Now, this question was asked before Portland executed a trade that involved Lowry Markinen going to Chicago. So the, the Bleacher Report thing was Damian Lillard and Derek Jones Jr. Jones already gone, but if there's another filler, I'm sure they're trying to figure something out. But he suggests uh, what Bleacher Report said, Lillard and now filler for Horford, Neesmith, Langford, Grant Williams, Peyton Pritchard, two first rounders and two pick swaps. That is not a realistic trade. First of all, if the Celtics, if, if Brad Stevens were able to execute that, then executive of the year on the spot because you're, you're giving up Horford, Neesmith and Pritchard, who are useful, but Horford's at the tail end of his career. Neesmith is still an unknown. Pritchard is still a bit of an unknown. I mean, he is going into his second year. So we can say we we, we wanted, uh, you know, what we've seen about him and all that stuff, but it's still, still an unknown as to what level he's going to reach. Then Langford and Grant Williams are, who knows how they're going to be long-term. Two first-rounders and two pick swaps, that, that gets you Damian Lillard. Uh, yeah, celebrate that win, uh, Brad Stevens. Portland would never do that. Portland would never do that. And here's here's a, a clear tell is when you know a deal is not going to work. That's one, two, three, four, five players for two. A five for two swap. Not going to happen. Do the, do the Portland Trailblazers, I didn't even look, do the Portland Trailblazers even have three extra open spots to acquire these guys? No, that means they're going to have to waive guys. This is not... It's not possible, or it's not likely. I don't think the Celtics are going to get Damian Lillard. I think Lillard is going to go through the start of this season. We'll see what happens at the deadline, but this is even less less likely at the deadline. Certainly not between two teams. Maybe Boston can get involved as a third team or something, but uh, certainly not as, as two teams. And, and I, this is not how trades necessarily work. Uh, I, I think people love to put fake trades together. I hate putting fake trades together. I will admit that. I hate putting f fake trades together. Um, I don't like speculating on that because different teams have different motivations. It's hard to say what, what Portland's going to be looking for. But I tell you, I don't think that that package is going to move the needle for them, especially that, since they're going to have to pick, you know, you have to wave a couple of these guys just to make them fit. So uh, that, that's, that's not something that's going to work for me. All right, back 
after the break to answer the question, are the Celtics really just an injury or two away from making or winning a championship? I'll explore that when I come back. First, I got to tell you about sweat block. Sweat block is the answer to excessive perspiration, which is an embarrassing problem that a lot of people have and don't like to talk about, but I'll talk about it for you. There's a doctor who had this same problem, and sweat block was the solution that he came up with. So doctor created, doctor recommended. And the way it works is it's like a wet nap looking thing, that a handy wipe where you take your shower, you put it on your problem area, then you go to sleep, uh, wake up in the morning, wash it all off. What we found here is that it works for up to seven days for some people. Seven days of being able to just walk around normally. You can use other antiperspirant, deodorant, whatever you want to smell like. You can you can wear that and go out and feel confident that you're not going to get those sweat stains. You can wear whatever color shirt you want. You don't have to wear layers in the summer. All those little tricks that people use to hide that excessive perspiration. You can Google it. You can go to Amazon and check it out. It's been a bestseller for over 10 years. 13,000 reviews. Uh, it's been featured on the Rachel Ray Show. It is your little secret to confidence, all right? Pop it in your toiletry bag, take it with you. Great if you need to make a good first impression and you're worried about somebody looking at your shirt and having all of these little wet patches on it. You don't want to have that. So check it out. The best part here is you get two things. Use the promo code Locked On. You're going to get 20% off at sweatblock.com. That's number one. And if it doesn't work, if for some reason it's just not effective for you, send it back. You get your money back. It's guaranteed one way or the other. It's either going to work or it's free. So there's no reason for you not to try Sweatblock. Again, 20% off at sweatblock.com. Use the promo code Locked On or pick it up at Amazon or CVS. Today's show also brought to you by Indeed. General managers are always asking questions to find the right players. Like, do they have ice in their veins? When you're hiring, you can use Indeed assessments to help make sure you're finding candidates with the skills you need. When it gets hard, you need Indeed. It's the job site that makes hiring incredibly simple. Just attract, interview, hire. You can do all of it from one place right on Indeed. No need to go scrambling around. You can interview, you can hire, you do all of it right through Indeed. So once you post your job, Indeed's Instant Match is going to send you a list of quality candidates whose resumes are on Indeed right there on the spot so you immediately can figure it out once you post that sponsored job. With Indeed Assessments, you can choose from 135 skills tests to help you make sure you're finding people with the skills that you're looking for. Three million businesses worldwide use Indeed to hire talent fast. Go right now. Get started with a $75 sponsored job credit to upgrade your job post at Indeed.com slash locked. Get a $75 job credit at Indeed.com slash locked. That's Indeed.com slash locked. Offer valid through September 30th. Terms and conditions apply. I want to send a shout out to my friends in New Orleans who have been dealing with that, that terrible hurricane. Hopefully everybody's fine. Hopefully everybody's doing well. Um, sending my thoughts out to everybody in New Orleans and, uh, be safe, and hopefully you can recover quickly. Let's get back to the questions here from Zach, who asks, are the Celtics not an injury two or, or injury or two away from winning the finals? I can't name one year of the playoffs in the last decade that a notable star hasn't gone down with a minor injury that causes a team not to meet their ceiling. I think we are cut and dry, the third best team in the East. So let me make the question easy for you. Are we a hardened, pulled hamstring and a Chris Middleton sprained ankle away from a finals appearance as it stands? Uh, I don't know that they're quite that far. This is this is part of the the issue here because we're assuming or anticipating injuries for these other teams. What about the Celtics? If the Celtics have injuries, if if they are a even if we accept the premise that they're a, a pulled hammy or a sprained ankle away, what about the pulled hamstring on the Celtics side? or the sprained ankle on the Celtic side. That's that's part of the problem here. That this, if they do, and, and there is a universe in which this is true, that they are an injury away, it's 
it does involve the Celtics having good injury luck this time around. And they haven't had good injury luck for a while. So, yes, it's possible that the Celtics are a couple of injuries away from a, a run to the NBA Finals. Sure, if we go back, but it, it depends on a lot of things. Depends on going back to what I was talking about in the first question, Jason Tatum being an MVP candidate. That needs to happen for the Celtics to be in a position to get to the NBA Finals or winning a championship. So Tatum needs to be an MVP. Jalen Brown needs to be uh, an all-star, like a lock all-star, not a hmm, maybe he'll be an all-star. Like he needs to be basically voted in or on the verge of being voted in. Then they need something else to pop, right? They need Smart to really be a great point guard. Uh, they need Robert Williams to find a next level where he's, he's not only – catching alley-oops and, and doing the things that we we love him for doing, but he's also playing that great positional defense. He's averaging six or seven assists a game. He's really picking teams apart with his passing. Again, all of this stuff is possible, right? It's, it's all – I can see this stuff happening. Will it all happen at the same time is the issue. If it can, if the Celtics are a top five defensive team, or a top three defensive team, then that makes it a little bit more likely because, all right, are, are they able to stop the Bucks? Are they able to stop the Brooklyn Nets? Uh, that all needs to play into it. So I don't think the Celtics can come in and just be the third best team. They have a, the potential to be the third best team. Miami has some question marks, but they've improved. Philly has a lot of question marks, but who know who knows what's going to happen there because that that Ben Simmons stuff is still lingering. There's there's a lot here that still needs to shake out in the East. You know where, where does Atlanta? Do they take a step back or a step forward? Uh, plenty plenty of teams in the East are 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 good, and but there's also variance. So. Yes, Zach, it's possible, but I don't think it's it's quite as um, I don't I don't think it's quite as likely as you make it seem that if the Celtics just have a normal season where some guys get hurt and there are some ups and downs, that a hardened pull hamstring is going to be enough to get them past the the Nets. Maybe maybe it's like last year. Maybe it's hardened hamstring and Kyrie injury or whatever, then that can get them past the Nets. Maybe they're in a better position there, but it, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tougher battle than that than you're making it seem, I think. And then Juan asks, have the Celtics gotten on the treadmill? And in parentheses he says, I think they have. And if so, how do they get off? Now the treadmill is that treadmill of mediocrity, right? You're just kind of sitting there in the middle. Like the Indiana Pacers are are on on a treadmill here. And I think that's the worst place to be. I think the worst place for a team to be is perennially third, fourth, fifth seed, or actually like somewhere fourth, fifth seed, where you're just good enough to think we're a piece away. We're one piece away. We just need that one extra thing, and then whew, we're going to take off. Makes it harder to really evaluate what you have. And I think the Celtics might have been on the treadmill, but what Brad Stevens did was say, okay, we're we're not we're not going with Kemba again. We're not going to roll with Kemba again. Money wise, that was going to be inevitable. Inevitable, but you know, Kemba's out. Tristan's out. We're not we're not dealing with this. The, that team is not going to be good enough. That team could be a fourth seed, but is just not good enough to be the championship contender. So we've got to strip some of that away. Keep what works, and what works is Tatum and Brown. And to some degree, we'll see if Smart and Robert Williams really do work and are, are worth that four-year commitment. Then you can start building around that. And you figure out which of these young guys can help support that. And then you start going out and trying to add around that, that team. But you're, you're starting with your two stars. I think what Brad Stevens did was... Almost like when you're seeing a guy running on the treadmill, somebody running on the treadmill at the gym, and then as that thing, the, the treadmill is still going, they just kind of step off for a second. And and this year is, is that. And then they could just jump right back on, or they could actually you know, put up the incline and just keep moving forward. They can actually uh, improve themselves. So 
I don't think they're stuck in the treadmill right now. I think where they are is ahead of ahead of that by making some of the moves that they've made this past uh, this summer. So I I, I don't want to see them stuck and just be perennial fourth seed. They they do need to make some moves. And, and that's why it's so dependent on what other teams – what what do you see the Brooklyn Nets? Well, how do you get past that? How do you get past Milwaukee? you got to read the rest of the league. So, so far, I think Brad Stevens has, has done that. Going to come back, going to explain this buyout thing because Rondo, Rajon Rondo, bought out by Memphis, and he's going to go to the Lakers. How is this possible? How does this whole thing work financially? I'm going to talk about that when I come back next. Uh, I'm also going to talk about Rock Auto right now. It's the place to go for anything, your car, truck, motorcycle, RV, all of those need. It's the place to go for simple things, complicated things. I mean, you think about those chain stores that you drive by at those strip malls. It's impossible. Just look at that next time you drive by. I mean, keep your eyes on the road, but (laughs) look at it when you have an opportunity to be safe and while you look at it. But it's impossible Think about all the cars that are on the road with you. It's impossible for that little place to have something that that all of these cars need, right? doesn't make any sense to go in there thinking that you're going to get exactly what you need. Go to rockauto.com. They have the extensive library uh, catalog of parts, simple parts, complicated parts, white wipers, something deep in your engine that I don't understand, but maybe you do. And... They will help you save 30, 50, 100%, depending on where you normally shop, on whatever you're looking for. They have been doing this for quite some time, more than 20 years, as a family business serving do-it-yourselfers. You know you can trust a family business that's been helping people out for that long. The prices are the same for everybody. They don't change them. They don't mess around like an airline ticket, uh, like some other places do. It's pretty simple. Go to rockauto.com. Plug in all the things that you're looking for and make sure you see it for yourself. I'm pretty sure once you do that, you're going to buy something. And when you do, write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box. That's the only way they know that we sent you. So make sure you write Locked On in their How Did You Hear About Us box. It's an amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. Once you're done listening to this podcast, make sure you head on over and subscribe to the Locked On Today podcast to get caught up on all the big news across all sports. This way, when you walk into work, you can go to that water cooler and be caught up on everything. It's just a 20-minute podcast. Peter Bukowski gets you up to date real fast, and then you'll know all the big stories around all of sports. It's locked on today. Subscribe wherever you get your podcasts. Let's finish up the bonus Tuesday mailbag with a couple more questions here, starting with Fred, who says, I listen every day. I'm a basketball fanatic. But even with an NBA, I never understood buyouts such as Kemba with the Knicks or Rondo going to the Lakers. Do the players give up money? Who pays them? New or old team? Does it count against the cap? If so, for which team? So many variables to consider. Yes. So Rondo is going to sign a deal, $2.6 million deal with the Lakers. And he was bought out by the Memphis Grizzlies. So here's how it works. A player negotiates a buyout, and it's different for different players, but generally, they're trying to get the same amount of money that they're owed, and Rondo's a great example. He's going to make $7.5 million this year. He was under contract for $7.5 million, so he's going to sign a veteran minimum $2.6 million deal when he goes to the Lakers, so that works out to be, what, $4.9 million that is left over in the middle. So he and the Memphis Grizzlies agree to a buyout. You negotiate the buyout and they say, okay, 4.9 million. We will give you $4.9 million and waive you. Now, the way waivers work is, you know, they cut, a team cuts you and you go through the entire, everybody, every team in the league has an opportunity to claim this player at the full salary, not the buyout, the, the full salary, if you have the means to do it. You have to have $7.5 million to spend. So if you had the full mid-level, you could do that if you wanted to, if you really wanted Rondo. Teams generally don't, right? So 
Rondo goes to Memphis, says, all right, here's my buyout. Let's do it. 4.9 million. 4.9 million now stays on the books for the Memphis Grizzlies. They, they have a $4.9 million cap hit this year, and they pay him $4.9 million. Then Rondo goes over to the Lakers, signs the one-year $2.6 million deal, and now he, there's a cap hit for that on their books. Side note, minimum deals aren't really – so the $2.6 million, the NBA encourages teams to sign veterans – at the at the minimum, so the NBA reimburses half of that, so their cap hit's going to be 1.3 million. Just as a side note, but if the Celtics, like when the Celtics traded Kemba and the the Thunder bought him out, they agreed to a negotiated number, and Kemba is getting that number that that money, and then he goes to the Knicks and they pay him whatever they pay him. So the Knicks are on the books for whatever they pay him as a free agent. The Thunder are on the books for whatever they've paid him this year. And next year, it's off the books. And that's it. So uh, that's that's basically how the buyouts work. You are agreeing to cut a player. You come up with a number that's generally below the number that's owed. And usually you can assume that it's close to, if not equal, to the difference between what he was making and what his new contract's going to be, right? You, you get that? So um, so they generally don't give up a ton of money, but they can. Sometimes they do. They'll give up an extra million or two just to get to a better situation. And part of why you say, well, why would a player give up a million or two? Well, because depending on the player, if it's an extra $2 million, well – your, your agent gets a cut of that. There's taxes that come out of that. The the real the your real loss. I mean, it's still a significant amount of money. It's it's a, an amount of money that I would love to have in my hands, but for them at that point, they're just it's it's fine. They've made enough. They're they're going to go to wherever they're going to go to. Hopefully, that explained the buyouts. If not, ask me again. I'll try to explain it a little bit better, but. That, that's, that's how it works. And finally, Leo asks, how important are previous connections between players and coaches? Thinking of Richardson, Horford, and Doka in particular, but also Horford with Williams and even Schroeder. Prior relationships are, are a big deal. They, they are. I mean, it's not like the biggest thing, the, but any kind of prior working relationship you can have that, that helps accelerate a process like this is big. So Ime Udoka having prior relationships with, with players in, in different cities, uh, whether it's Team USA, whether it's San Antonio or Philly or Brooklyn, any kind of opportunity that he's had to work with these players gives him already a head start on, well, I've seen how Al Horford works. I know what that situation was in Philly. I saw how he handled it. I saw his professionalism. I saw, so I know already that I can count on him to be a certain way. Richardson, I've seen with Richardson, okay, this Philly situation wasn't particularly great. Uh, I you know, scouted him when, when they were playing Miami, and he's, he's seen how Richardson has worked and how he hasn't worked. And now he has – a personal experience with, all right, I, I know a little bit of what makes him tick. I think I know how I can connect to this guy. I think I know how I can talk to him because I've seen how to talk to him before to try to connect and get something out of him. So all of these little things, you know, even working with with Dennis Schroeder, if, if you've had any sort of prior kind of Anything that you've had, any kind of prior relationship that you've had, makes a difference. It it's just like when you know, you're in a, a relationship. If you get into a new relationship with a new with a person that you've just met, meet at a bar. There's a lot of getting to know each other, your your tendencies. If you start dating someone that you've worked with or a friend of a friend that you kind of know, you already start. You already have that 
oh, I already know that this other person likes these shows. I know that this person, I already know that this person is allergic to shellfish or something like that. So you're already ahead of the game. That That's kind of the head start that I'm talking about with the relationship in, in basketball. When you already know those little things, you can avoid some pitfalls. You can avoid the, you know, surprise dinner at Legal Seafood and, you know, your date's like, oh, yeah, I hate seafood. <laughs> like, oh, crap. So that, that, that type of stuff really, really is helpful. And that is also, by the way, side note, helpful between coaches, very helpful between GMs. People who run teams and have prior working relationships with these other teams, they will get deals done more quickly because either you've negotiated deals before or you've, you've already had that prior relationship. You already know how to get past certain roadblocks. So across the NBA, previous connections between players and coaches, players and players, coaches and coaches, executives and executives, all of it. It's super, super important and can be very helpful to varying degrees and, and helps teams accomplish goals in a lot of different ways. Okay, that's a bonus podcast, a mailbag podcast. Really appreciate people sending in the questions. You can keep sending them in. I will keep answering. If you've got a ton more questions, I'll add another bonus mailbag podcast. This is what the offseason is about. There are things that are happening that maybe you're not quite sure about, or maybe you just want a little help with some of the nuance in the NBA. So johncorrales.com slash mailbag. Very simple. johncorrales.com slash mailbag. You know, there's a mailbag thing up there. You can click on that, send me your question. I will get to it. I have a bunch more questions. Friday mailbag is going to come up and I will answer the rest that I get here on that Friday mailbag. And if there's another onslaught, I'll do a bonus podcast next week. Make sure you're subscribed. I'm going Monday through Friday. I'm still going Monday through Friday. I'm still going to get you podcasts here on the daily, so you're subscribed uh, on your podcast app, whichever app. We are free, 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 free. We're not charging. We're not hiding behind a paywall. We're not jumping behind a paywall. We are staying free, and we're everywhere. Any podcast platform you want, YouTube, we're on YouTube, so make sure that you're subscribed there. Comment and share the podcast. Most importantly, when people ask you, hey, you really know what you're talking about, about the Celtics. Where'd you learn all that stuff? You say, hey, the Locked On Celtics podcast. It's part of the Locked On Podcast Network.